This is Tanish Laverne Grant reporting live from the Apollo Theater in my home city of Harlem, USA for the 13th annual Apollo Spring Gala, where tonight we will be honoring Saw and Pepper, Belle Bivivo, and Tony, Tony, Tony. So stay tuned. Tanish Laverne Grant, blackinamerica.com. Guys, this is Tanish Laverne Grant back again for BlackInAmerica.com at the 13th annual Apollo Spring Gala, where we are paying tribute to the 90s. And I got Leon with me. So, who's one of your favorite groups from the 90s? Uh, other than the Five Heartbeats. We can't forget uh, the Five Heartbeats. Um, you know, there's so many great groups from the 90s. I mean, I just what's, what's a song that pops in your head like boom. You know, there's so many. I mean, you know, the music that was going on back then was just legendary. You know, and, and not just groups, hip hop, everything. You know, it was the birth of so many great songs, so many great groups, so many great, so much great music. You know, um, I wish we can go back to it. Not you know? more than I do. I listen to the radio, and you can't. I mean, I have my like younger, you know, little mentees in the car, and I'm like, oh wait. You got to turn that off. Or I'm just you know, yeah, nowadays, you know, you hear music on the radio that you don't even really have lyrics. And, it, and they, say the, they say the same lyrics 72 times in a song. No, no real melody, no real writing. And, you know, it's the way it is. But as long as we can cherish and always remember the things that we had, yeah. you know, people, people can say to you, oh, oh, you might be getting older and you can tell them, well, at least I saw the great bands and great groups when they were still doing concerts and when they were coming out with records. And I feel so grateful that I got to see them. Aging is a wonderful thing. We all get here, we all leave the same way, right? Nobody, oh yes, yeah. oh yes. The only way to opt out is to die young and who wants to do that? You don't really get to see your full self, real no, life. you don't want to die young, but you also want to hope that you, you know, stick around in good health, yeah. you know, for all of your life. Yeah. You look great, brother. Thank you, darling. So do you. Well, listen, thank you. I'm paying homage to Tony Braxton's Making Me Hot video. Uh, okay. Remember? Okay. Yes, yeah. I, I, so I, I got to stay on I do. I do. I, well, I appreciate that. I'm sure she does, too. Yeah. So talk to me about the legacy of the Apollo and what it means to you. Wow. The Apollo Theater. The Apollo Theater is a, a legendary institution that for, for everyone, for, for all races, all colors, but especially for us people of color, and especially for someone like me that was born, raised, and currently resides in New York City. It's an institution. I performed here as an actor. I performed here with my band. I performed here in movies. You know, so, you know, it's a very special place for me. I will always support it, and I'm glad it's still here, going strong, and I hope it's going strong long after I'm gone. Ms. Camila Forbes, who is the executive producer of the Apollo. Thank you, thank it you. It gets better and better every year. Oh, I'm so good to hear that. No, we're really excited about this year. You know, again, it's sort of a culmination of our season. It's an opportunity to celebrate, let our hair down, literally a little bit, after all the hard work. Everybody's talking about it. I was at Mac at 59th Street, Columbus yeah. Circle, getting yeah. some lashes put on, yeah. and there were like four women yeah. getting their makeup done. No kidding. And we were all like, oh, where, where are you going to? Yeah. They were like, oh, the Apollo oh. Spring Gala the place to be. I love it. You know, and it's, it's beautiful that, you know, we have this sort of inflection point in the city where people can celebrate the Apollo, where we can celebrate the Apollo, we celebrate our legacy, and this year in particular, really kind of focusing on a little 90s flair. So, I mean, with the folks that we got here, you know, Tony, 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 and BBD, and Salt and Pepper, and Brandy. Oh, Brandy's here? Oh, Dapper Dan's coming through. You guys, this carpet is so lit. I can't even contain myself. <laughs> That's exciting, yeah. So how long does it take to put the gala together? This is like a, a year-long process yeah, I mean, for you guys? We're constantly working on it throughout the year because, you know, as you know, it's one of our biggest fundraisers. So our development team is constantly cultivating for the gala. People don't know that. They think, oh, a gala, yeah. yeah no. no. This it's is a production. It's a production, you know. It takes a while not only to get the show together, but really it's about raising funds for our institution. And, uh, and our development team does such an amazing job of raising a, a great deal of money to keep our programs going. What do you want young people to understand about the Apollo? Because a lot of times with younger, the younger generation, they're like, oh, the Apollo, that's old school, yeah, you know, yeah. nobody's 
checking yeah. for that. Yeah. It's like we have to keep That's right. these legacies intact. So what would you like to say to young people? It is a leg it is a the Apollo is a legacy institution, but but it's also an institution that's moving forward, right? We are a home for today's next legends of tomorrow. And, and that's who we want to be. So with programming that we've done, like for instance, we presented Legacy this year, doing a tribute to Nina Simone. Um, we had a wonderful piece this season by ta that we adapted ta Coates' book and had Black Thought and Common and Angela Bassett, developing new works for tomorrow. That's what we want the Apollo to be. Of the legendary Sapphire Dan come through. I mean, so you are truly an unrepeatable event, sir. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I'm always excited for events that take place in Harlem because coming here to the Apollo, first time I came to, to the Apollo, I came through the back. <laughs> I had, when I was a little kid, I was so excited about getting here. I climbed up the fire escape and went through the, through the windows into the dressing room and ran down. You know what, you should just do like story time. You and I should talk. I would yeah, love yeah. to do a conversation. Yeah, I can tell because you. Because you have some amazing stories. Oh man, so many. So many. I got my memoirs coming out um, next year. The manuscript is already finished. And, yeah, and uh, it's by Ra uh, Random House is producing it. And then I got uh, Random House is working with um, Sony Pictures. It's going to be uh, epic. Um, we're going to talk about my father coming from down south in 1910. Uh, yes, I never went back. He only went to the third grade, and now I'm here now. Yes. About people, you know, some of these bigger brands like Gucci, when they knocked off one of your designs and tried to pass it off as their own, and now Gucci, Zapper Dan, Harlem. But when you first saw it, you know, and people were tweeting and putting on social media and Instagram, like I think I first saw it on Dark Coxum's Instagram. Okay. Yeah. But you know, actually, when when I uh, look back on it, this has been taking place for like maybe 10 or 15 years, but. Nobody ever noticed it, and um, I have to give credit for Gucci because what they did was phenomenal. You know what I mean? They reached out to me and showed their sincerity. But when they announced it, they came to Harlem, did a campaign with all people of color for the campaign, and the second campaign we were getting ready to do. And this is not a collaboration. This is a partnership. You know, and so their intentions and their ful fulfilling that, their intentions is to give me the same trajectory that Tom Ford or Mark Jacobs would have. I'll be with them for a year or two, as long as I wish, and then and, and then go on. So this is this is not a collaboration. I want the public to know that. You know, this day of the they treated me the way any other European designer would be treated. I wouldn't have it any other way being born and raised in Harlem. Yeah, Maurice Dubois, yes. So talk to me about coming out tonight and supporting the 13th annual Apollo Spring Gala and the tribute to music in the 90s. We've come many years and every time you come to the Apollo, don't you get the sensation? It's just, it's special. No matter how many times you come, it's special. The walls, if they could talk, those dressing rooms, the people who've been there, history, living, breathing history, and it never stops, and we're here to help keep it going, right? Today's hip-hop started with the other day's hip-hop, right? Late 80s, uh, 80s, 70s, hip-hop, and that built on, on James Brown, and it built on all that other stuff, and right? I mean, come on, you gotta go back to, to the blues and jazz. It's all, it's all a continuum, and it's just a part of it today. I remember the first time I was on the stage for an event, what? And I was shocked. I haven't been on the stage. Yeah. No. We'll wait till the show's over and just run up on the stage. That's not how we did it. We did. We, it was an event, and so I had to present, and so I was awed, and I'm still awed each time I get that kind of opportunity. It's amazing. It really is. It gives you goosebumps. Yeah.